is a factor 2. And this factor 2 appeared here already. So can I say that if 8 is a factor of a number, then 8 is a factor of the number. I mean, it's, it's obviously true, isn't it? If 8 is a factor of a number, then 8 must be the factor of a number. Why am I talking in such weird language? Because when 2 over here is a factor of a particular number and at the same time, 8 is also a factor of that particular number, aren't I just wasting my breath? Because 2 is already a factor inside 8. You see, 2 is already a factor of 8. So I don't need to say if 2 is a factor and 8 is a factor so many times. I don't need to say that already. Because since 2 is a factor of 8, I can simply cancel this one out. If 8 is a factor of a number, then does that mean 16 is a factor of the number? No, right? It doesn't mean that. All it tells me is that if 8 is a factor of the number, then that number could be 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 46, so on and so forth, right? They're all multiples of 8. That doesn't mean that 16 is the factor of the number. Understand? Okay, so this over here is false. Okay, so true, true, false. Let us move on to the homework that was given. Ah, over here, exercise 13, right? Twelve B, yes. Who didn't try the homework? Why not? Sheldon, may you please stand up? Why didn't you do your homework? I can't hear you. What did you say? You thought it was due on Thursday. But this one is... Okay, fine. Uh, maybe I wasn't very clear. For these kind of notes, uh, questions, homework that I give in the notes, right? I'm going to use the notes the next day. And of course, I'm going to be talking about it. So I expect it to be done. Whereas for homework that is found at the end of your notes, for example, like this one highlighted, it will be due on Thursday. Understand? Am I clear now? Okay, thank you. Please sit down. Thank you for holding up. So the rest try, yeah? Okay, now find the smallest positive integer of m for which 63m is a multiple of 420. We use the same methods that we have always been using. So first, the question is very nice. They gave you that 63 is equal to 3 squared times 7. So um, let us just write that down first. Part B. 63 is equal to 3 squared times 7. And next, I have 420. We will express this again in our um, index notation. So list down all the primes. What do we have for this? What do you all have? 420 equals to? How much, how much? 2 square times 3 times 5 times 7. Okay, everybody should have this. And now, since 63m is a multiple of 420, so my 63m will look like this. Okay, let me use another color. 63m. Ah, okay. Too thick. 63m looks like this, so I'll multiply by another m, right? Okay, so far, 63m is a multiple of 420, which means 420 is a factor of 63m, right? Is that the opposite, ma? If uh, 63m is a multiple of 420, then 420 must be a factor of 63m. Logical, right? If 420 is a factor of 63m, that means all the factors found in 420 
they must be found where? They must be found in 63M. So let's do a check. Do we have all these factors? Are all these factors found inside 63M? Let's see. Uh. 2 square, is it found inside? No, it is not found inside. So what I will need to do is, I will need to multiply 63 by 2 square. Okay, multiply by 2 square. Okay, next, let's look at this factor over here, 3. Is it found in my 63M already? It is found there, right? In fact, I have 2 of them. I have 3 times 3. Whereas in 420, we only have 3. It appeared only once. So since it is found inside, leave it. Okay, let's move on to the next factor, 5. Is it found in my 63M? No. no. So what I need to do will be to multiply this by 5. And on the other side, I have to multiply by 5 so that my left hand side will be equal to my right hand side. Okay? Now, I have a new number. Can you tell me how much this is? Can somebody just calculate quickly and tell me how much this is? 3 squared times 7 times 2 squared times 5. What? 1260. The question didn't ask me to calculate. Huh? I just want to know uh, to satisfy my own curiosity. Is this 1260 a multiple of 420? Is it? Yes, it is. Okay, so now we are sure that this is a multiple already. But the question didn't ask for that value. They asked for the value of M. This M over here. So how much is this M? M will be equal to 5 times 2 square. That is what we introduced. Right? Initially, uh, if you remember, at the beginning I had this. 63 equals to 3 square. No. I had this. 63. I wrote this initially. 63 M equals to 3 square times 7 and I multiply this by m, right? Initially, this was what we wanted. And now, finally, after all our working, we had this. 63 times 2 square times 5. 63 times 2 square times 5. Obviously, m must be my value of 2 square times 5. Likewise, for the other side, 3 square times 7 times 2 square times 5. So that will be my value of m, okay? So find the smallest positive uh, value of m, blah, blah, blah. And therefore, my answer will be 20. Okay, do you get that correct? If you did, can you please use your green pen and put a tick? If you didn't get it correct, can you please copy down the corrections? Okay, now let's go on to example number 13. Exercise 13. 168 is equal to 2 cubed times 3 times 7. Find the smallest positive integer value of n, for which 168n is a multiple of 324. Same method, just that right now we have different numbers. Okay, so 168 equals to 2 cubed times 3 times 7. And we know that it's eventually we are going to have a value n over here. So I leave a bit of space. Next value is uh, 324. Expressed as a product of its prime factors will be 2 squared times 3 to the power of 4. Okay? They want 168 n to be a multiple of 324, meaning 324 is going to be a factor of 168n, correct? So are all these factors found inside 168n? 
Are they all found inside? Not yet. For example, let us take a look at the first one, 2 square. Is this 2 square found inside 168N? Is it found inside? Yes, it is. Over here, 324, I only required only require the 2 times 2, right? This is just 2 times 2. Whereas over here, I have 2 times 2 times 2. So yes, they, this is found inside here already. So I don't need to do anything for the factor 2. Okay? And then let's look at this 3 to the power of 4 over here. Are they all found inside 168 and? All found inside? John, you were absent, right? Yeah. Did you watch the videos? Yeah. Oh, so do you know what's happening? No idea, right? What should I do now? <coughs> should I reteach everything? Okay, let's just pause. Huh? Now, this over here is 3 to the power of 4. Do you know what this means? Yeah. What is it? What does 3 to the power of 4 mean? Very good. You got it right. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Right? There are 4 of them inside. What about this one over here? How many are there? How many 3's are there here? Yeah, there's just one only, right? So do I have all of this inside here? Do I have 4 trees inside 168N? See, uh, there, are, there are four trees over here, right, in 324. And how many trees are there inside 168 and? Just, just one. Yes, just one only. So do I have four of them? No, I don't. How many more do I need? Three more, yes. Three more of trees. So now he's starting to get a clearer idea. We need three more. So instead of writing three times three times three, I do it in a shorter way. Three cube, right? So if I multiply by three cube over here, I also need to multiply by three cube over here for it to be the same. Therefore, now I have 324 being a factor of 168 times three cube already. And therefore my answer for n n will be equals to 3 cubed, which is 27. Do you get that? Yes. You can present it this way. Okay? Okay, anybody try this one? Do you, what was the answer? Oh, okay, yeah. Sounds like most of you got an answer. So, factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, 8. Factors of 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20. How many different factors are there here? Okay, let's, let's count, huh? How many different ones? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 7 different factors here, right? And this number has 8 factors. So, over here I have 7 already. I just need one more factor. Well, what is the number? Yeah, you all already got the answer. The last number is 40. We just take 20, multiply by 2, and we get 40. Right, so let's see if the number is if the number is uh, forty, then the factors are one, two, four, five, eight, ten, twenty, and forty. How many factors are there? Exactly eight. Okay. Right, that's all for our first set of notes.
because we already finished exercise 15. Then, if you go back to our very first page, okay, look at this over here. This is called self-reflection. Which means, at the end of the notes, you look at the first page, you think about what you have learned. I am able to find the factors of whole numbers. Are you able to do so? If you can, then you put a tick. Then, to test yourself, list all the factors of 72. So fill it up. One, two, three, blah, 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 blah. Do it yourself. Then you go on to point number two. I am able to find multiples of whole numbers. Can you do that? If you can, put a tick. List down the first five multiples. Just finish everything until 1.1e. So for John, unfortunately, he is not able to list, to put a tick across everything yet, but he will be able to do so after he watches the video. Okay? Let's look at two numbers, huh? 30 and 36. In our primary school, we will list down all the factors as 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 30 factors of 36. Change this to 36. And we see that there are some common factors. What are they? For example, 1, 2, 3, 6. Any more? No, that's it. So these are the common factors. And all of all these factors, some of them are common. Wen Yen, can you please sit up straight? Likewise for Sheldon. If you put your head down, you'll feel more tired. If you really feel sleepy, please come and get a pass. You will just, I will just allow you to go to the toilet and wash your face. It is normal to feel sleepy. Nobody can just stay awake all the time. Yes, John? What? Okay, please come over here. Uh, we understand, right? Because he had trouble following. He didn't understand what was happening. Right. Okay, now. Um, why? What are you laughing about? Okay, uh, come back to this. Common factors are 1, 2, 3, 6. Among them, 6 is the highest, so we call it the highest common factor. Instead of doing it that way, by listing, we are going to use what we learned, uh, prime factorization. Everybody remember what that is? Two methods you learn, right? Are they your repeated division? 30. You use your repeated division. 30 divided by 2, you get 15. Then you divide by 3, you get 5. Divide by 5, you get 1. And we stop here. Or we use our, uh, the 3. So 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 5. And then we stop. So therefore, we have 30 expressed as its prime number, so it'll be 2 times 3 times 5, and 36 will be 2 square times 3 square. Okay, now, for the H, the highest common factor, this is the trick, huh? pay close attention. Or look at the screen. To find the highest common factor, all I need to do is to just find the common factors. Okay, let's take a closer look. What do I mean? Zoom in, zoom in. 30 equals to 2 times 3 times 5, 36 equals to 2 square times 3 square. If I were to rewrite this, this will be 2, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Isn't it? It's the same thing, right? Let me compare. Between 30 and 36, which are the common factors? We just take out only those that are common, huh? Okay, for example, this 2 over here, and these two, they are common, right? Common? Let's take it out. So my highest common factor will be two times, what else is common? Three. Uh, then that's it, answer six. Easy? Easy? Can follow? Okay, let's try another example. Huh? Uh, what about all these 5 and the remaining 2, remaining 3 and this 5 over here? Don't care. 
they are not part of my highest common factor. I only take out what is common, okay? Let's go to exercise 1A. Find the highest common factor in 24 and 108. You should be able to follow this. Where is finished? Part A? Finished. Okay. Uh, let's take a look. So for 24 expressed as a product of its prime factors, we have 2 cubed times 3. And for 108, we have 2 square times 3 cubed. So the working is over here. Thank you. Working is over here. And now, highest common factor. What did I say? What am I supposed to extract out from 24 and 108? What should I take out? Only the common factors, right? Whatever is common, I take it out. So, the very first factor will be 2. Is it just 2? How many 2's are common? 3 of them? Are there 3 2's that are common? Okay, let me... Let me rewrite this. Make it clearer for you. You might not be used to it yet. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And over here we have 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, now first one. Let us take out the very first common factor. Over here, right? Common. So 2 times. Any more common? What's the next common factor? Is there another 2 that is common? There is, right? One more. So another one. Okay, what's next? 3 is not common. So what is my highest common factor? 12. Understand how to do this? Okay, and uh, by the way, in, I need you to make some changes. Instead of, calling, instead of using uh, repeated division, which is the second method. We're going to use prime factorization because what I've taught you so far is called prime factorization. Okay, change it.
Who still needs this on the screen? How do I say what to erase it so that I have space for part B of my question? Okay, I'm going to erase it now. Everybody, please try part B using the same method. And I will do it as well. But please try it yourself first. Oh yeah. I have already listed down all the factors. I'm going to use my, okay, I can't use a pencil in this case, so I'll use green color. I'm going to group them up. This is the common factor. So highest common factor will be three, multiplied by, again, another three, which is nine. Okay? After you have done it many times, you wouldn't have to list it down this way, you don't have to group it up this way anymore. Because you will be able to, for example, just by looking at 27 equals to 3 cubed, 63 equals to 3 squared times 7, 207 equals to 3 squared times 23. Looking at this, okay, eventually, uh, with enough practice, you will be able to tell me that highest common factor is equal to 3 squared. Looking at this, Three squares is they are common. Okay, don't need to expand this way. Don't need to expand this way anymore. We can leave it as this. Okay, sometimes the powers are very big. For example, if you end up with a power of uh, eight, are you gonna write three times three times three times three times three, and then you group it up? No need. Eventually, you are expected to 
identify the common group over here, which is three square. Everything else is different, okay? So let's move on to exercise two. Given that A, B, C are as such, find the greatest common factor or highest common factor of A and B. So for part A, HCF will be equals to, we don't need to care about C, huh? what is common in A and B? Let's look at the number 2. How many 2's are there in A? There are 2 of them. How many 2's are there in B? So what is the common factor? Just like this, right? Any more common factors? Let's, let's concentrate on the trees now. How many common trees are there? There are two of them, right? So I'll multiply this by three square. Because those are the common ones. If you like, if you still need more practice, you can go and expand it out. It'll be two times two, times three, times three, times seven, times seven, times seven. And then you go and group them accordingly. But I am telling you that you have to learn how to do it just by looking, okay? So two times three squared, that is common. Any more common factors? No, that, that, that's it really. So easy, right? Nine times two is 18. Put a tick, you got it right. So now part B. Greatest common factor of A, B, and C. Huh, that's it? Very easy, huh? Okay, this one also correct. Because all of all of them, only two is the common factor. Okay? Now I want you to imagine in primary school, what did you do? What would you do if you are given this question? Given that A equals to 2 squared times 3 squared times 7 cubed, B equals to blah blah blah, C equals to blah blah blah. Find a highest common factor. What would you have done? Would you have uh, no 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 sweeping question? We have used your calculator and press and find out the value of A, find out the value of B, find out the value of C, yeah. and then you start to list out all the common all the factors. Yeah. And then after that you go and find which are the common factors? Yeah. A lot of time taken, right? So can you see that right now in secondary school we learn different methods? In this case it is called class factorization. This will save you a lot of time. No guessing required. Thing down, okay? Okay, exercise three. I would like you to try it yourself at home. So this is your homework. Huh? You okay? If you finish, then good for you. That means I'm going too slowly, right? Okay. Next. Okay. Example. Have you? I'm sure you've seen this out of questions before. Birthday party, everybody receives the same number of chocolates. Every child receives the same number of candies. The 72 chocolates, 45 candies. What is the greatest number of children who can attend the party? What do you think they're asking for? Yeah, they, they mentioned so many things, but they are just asking for HCF of 72 and 45. Yes, yes. Ah, yes, last time in primary school you do guess and check for these sort of questions, right? Actually, they are simply asking you for the highest common factor of 72 and 45. Okay, so this one, also your homework, because it is so easy. Homework. Okay. Where example? That is one. Or do you need me to go through for you? No. Only ask too easy, right? Okay. Then uh, example four is actually the same thing. They're asking for the HCF of four two zero and five zero four. Okay. Go ahead and understand the question and understand why I am saying that this question simply asks you to find HCF. Part B. Think about it, la. if you know the number of groups already, can you find the number of boys? Right? 
If you know the number of groups, I'm sure you can find the number of boys. Yeah, of course, Sumo. on the page, you should see homework again. Uh, by this time, this piece of homework it is to be done on where should it be done? Back, you finish it up, you submit it to me, then I'm okay. But if you don't submit it to me, then uh, there'll be things like there'll be other consequences, okay? Now if you look at if you look at this part, optional exercise. What does that mean? What is optional? Okay, yes. Optional. Optional means not compulsory. If you do, good for you, I will mark. If you don't do, then I assume that you are confident and you already know how to do all the types of questions and you don't need to practice anymore. Okay? Okay, before I move on, any questions for Higgs yet? Yeah. I think you can't see me later on. Okay, uh, we don't have much time left, so maybe. I introduce you to the second method of finding HCF, okay? We are very clear with the first method, right? And it is the method that we will commonly use. The second method for finding the HCF is this. Method two, repeated division. Okay, we go back to one of the first few pages. Repeated division. Subsequently, you see this is what it is. attention? What's the commotion about? Okay, back to this uh, more than the first few pages. Remember we start off by asking about the HCF of 30 and 36. So we did listing down. Then after that we learned this first method called prime factorization. Now we're going to learn something called repeated division. Haven't you heard of this phrase before? Repeated division? Yes, right. This is uh, a little bit different. Let's see what it means. Huh? Initially, our repeated division, it looks like this, isn't it? But now, we are going to make slight modifications to it. We do two repeated divisions at the same time. Okay, we list down, we, list, uh, we write down 30 and 36 at the same time. We are going to divide. I am going to divide by uh, the smallest prime number that I can find, right? So between 30 and 36, which is the smallest prime number? Yeah, 2 is a factor, so I'm left with 15 and 18 over here, right? Can I divide by 2 again? No, I can't. I need to use 3. So here I'm left with 5 and I'm left with 6. Then I cannot move on anymore already. Because out of these 5 and 6, they don't have any more common factors. Only one is a common factor. But we don't care about one being a common factor because it doesn't do anything. So we stop here. Okay, over here, since one is the common factor, we stop. So then, how do I find the, HC, the highest common factor? Oh, HCF is simply 2 times 3. Let me get 6. Okay? Which method do you prefer? Who, who prefers the first one? Who prefers the second one? Okay, about half half, okay? Uh, both methods are valid. But, listen to me, especially for those who prefer method number two, you will see questions that require you to, you to use, uh, to be familiar with method one most of the time. Because of the way the question is presented, 
So most of the time you will end up using method one. So you must be very familiar with how to use method one as well. Huh? So let us just try the same question, exercise one, if you still have space, if you still have space, let's try question one using repeated division. If you don't have space, write on your, jot it down on a piece of foolscap paper. Okay? Let's do part A. 24, 108. What is the common prime? What's the next one? Two again. What's the next one? Two again. Three. Okay, any more common factors? No more, so I stop. Okay, so HCF equals to two square times three, which is 12. Okay? This is another method. What about Part B, I initially we learned only one number, then now we extended it to two numbers. Can I add on one more number? Yes, I can. So what will it look like? Part B right now will look like this. Twenty-seven, sixty-three, two hundred and seven. Common factor is two one of it. No, I right. three. So let's do nine. 21 and 69. Any more common factors? 3 again. Now we get 3, 7, and 23. Any more common factors? No. no. Okay, then the highest common factor is 3 square, which is 9. Okay? So, two different methods. Let's take a closer look at exercise number two. Let's take a closer look at it. Huh? They ask you to find a common, the greatest common factor of A and B. We've done it just now already. Which of these two methods can you use? You learn two methods, right? Method one, method two. Which one can we use for exercise number two? Yeah, we probably only can use exercise, uh, sorry, method number one. Method number two, also possible, but you end up having to write many, 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 many things. Instead of just three numbers, side by side, you end up with the first number being two square times three square times seven cube. Then the second number is two times three cube times five. You need a lot of space. Huh? So in this, in this exercise number two, method one is more useful. Okay? And that is why I say, most of the time, method one is the preferred choice. Any questions? Okay, now, if there are no questions, I will go on to the lowest common multiple. Then we go back to the same example, 30 and 36. Listing now all the multiples, and then we will see that there are some common multiples such as where are the common multiples? Can you find them? Oh, okay, 180. Any more? 360. There are some more, right? But can you see that this is very tedious? Very difficult, huh? A lot of work to do. And the lowest common multiple is 180. So again, we have two methods. To find the LCM. Again, prime factorization. What is the first step? Express 30 and 36 as a result of their prime factors. So everybody should be very familiar with this already. So for example, 30, if you want to use your three, then look at this, 15, three and five. So this is 30 equals to 2 times 3 times 5, 36 will be 2 square times 3 square. Okay? Now that we have these two these two statements, how do we find the LCM? Okay, so watch carefully, huh? 
LCM is a combination of all these factors. Combination. Okay? Let us look at um, this number over here, 2. In 30, what is my... How many, number, how many factors 2 are there? Inside this 30, how many tools do you see? How many tools do you see? One only. What about in the number 36? How many tools do you see? Two of them, right? So what am I going to do now? In our HCF, I only took out the common ones, right? In one more time, right? in HCF, I took out the common one. Right now, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to take out the one with the higher power. Okay, so over here, if I expand it out, this is actually 2 times 3 times 5. This is actually 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. I'm going to take out a higher power. In other words, I want everything. All of these factors, I want them inside my LCM. What do I mean by that? Over here, LCM will be 2. So, this 2, I've used up already over here. In this 2, okay. Next, I've got another 2 over here, right? I want it. I want it in my LCM. Times 2 again, okay. Then, after that, I have, the way these are group, huh? this 3 over here, I want it as well. Okay. Then what am I left with? Another three. I want it. Another five. I want it also. Basically, I want everything. Okay? Understand? Huh? Do, you want, do you want me to show you again? Can I show it to you again? Okay. So over here, I have... This is two times three times five, yes? Somebody just went already, so you have to wait first. And over here, I have 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Okay, so far? Let's enlarge it a little bit. We can do the same type of grouping, like what we did in our HCF. These belong in a group, right? So now, in LCM, instead of just selecting those in a group, meaning 2 and 3, I want every single factor inside. So what am I, what do I have for my factors? So the first group will be the two over here, right? So I put it on two, cancel it. Okay, so far, what is the next factor that I can see that I haven't canceled out? This two over here, I haven't canceled it out, right? So I put it in also. What else haven't I canceled out? Three, right? So these three over here, they belong in the same group. Any more? Oh, another three. And another five. Get it? Okay, if you still don't get it, go and watch the video again. The steps are quite straightforward. You need to practice this. Okay, then what am I left with? This will be two square times three square times five. So if you remember what I said earlier on, I said I will take the one with the higher power. So let us look at this 2 and this 2 over here. Which one has the higher power? Which has the higher power? 30 or 36? For the factor 2. 36, right? Because this one is power 2. Whereas this one is just a power 1. Okay? So that's why I chose the 2 to the power 2. Then let us compare with the trees and the trees over here. Which one has a higher power? The one at the bottom. So that's why I have three square. Then next, we are going to compare the five and nothing over here. Five. Yeah, so five is the highest, so I'm going to have five also. Okay, let's find out what this is. Four times nine times five. How much? 180. Wow, your mental sounds very good. Much better than mine. Oh, you use your calculator. Okay, now it's okay, you can use your calculator. So this is our 
lowest common multiple. And we have seen that this is the answer. This is indeed the answer when we listed everything out. So which method do you prefer? Do you prefer uh, doing it this way or your primary school method of listing it out? Some of you may not see the value of doing it this way first because it seems a bit confusing as compared to highest common factor, which is why in mathematics, when you're confused, you practice and practice. I'm sure in the past, you had difficulties with division, for example. And just keep doing it. Do and do until you're very familiar with it. You want to solve it. Likewise for this one. Okay? And there is a, again a second method, which is repeated division. Again, I'm not going to go into it yet. I want you to look at exercise 8, the remaining 2 minutes. Let's see how we can apply what we have learned in example, exercise 8. Flip, flip, flip to your exercise 8. We are skipping some of them. We'll come back to the uh, ones that I didn't cover in the future. So find the lowest common multiple of A and B. So for part A, LCM will be equals to, let's look at the 2 square and the 2, which has a higher power. 2 square, right? So I just put on 2 square. Nice. So this is done ready. We look at the 3's now. Which one has a higher power? 3 or 3 to the power of 4? 3 to the power of 4. Then what's next? We got a 5. Which one has the higher power? They're the same, right? So just put down 5. What's next? 7. That's the answer. Okay? Go ahead and evaluate this. Okay? Any questions on the application? Then, before the bell rings, let's look at part B. Okay, can you just give me one more minute? We just do part B. Very easy anyway, right? What is the what is the first number that you want to write down? Two to the power of two. Multiply by okay, three to the power of four. Multiply by good. Multiply by and yay, you got it right. That's it. Oh, okay. Finally, you still need to use your calculator and press. Oh, no, no. They said leave your answer in index notation, so we leave it like this. Okay, don't need press. Okay?